So we're going to jump right back into our elongation discussion. We've established DNA polymerase, nucleoside triphosphates, and the 5' prime to 3' prime rule. I want you to apply that knowledge right now and tell me which is the 5' prime end and which is the 3' prime end of this growing strand of DNA. This is my parent strand, and this is the DNA polymerase. You know for a fact that DNA polymerase always has to work 5' prime to 3' prime and reads 3' prime to 5'. Prime. That should tell you that based off of this drawing, the way that DNA polymerase is working, this is the 5' prime end of our growing strand, and it's going to grow in the 3' prime direction. And thus, our parent strand on the top is the 3' prime end over here and the 5' prime end over here. The direction of DNA polymerase is the end-all, be-all tool that tells you which is the 5' prime end and which is the 3' prime end based off of these rules that we've already established. So, moving forward, I stated and finished off by this primer concept, this orange primer that we added. How did it get there, and how did um, DNA polymerase it was how was DNA polymerase helped out in order for this orange primer to get there? Because we know DNA polymerase can't just randomly start adding on blue things, these blue portions. It needs some help, and it gets this help by something called RNA primase. So RNA primase is an enzyme that's going to add on short pieces of DNA, specifically RNA. So we're going to write this down. Adds on, RNA primase adds on short pieces of, it's called RNA primer in this situation. Okay. So short pieces of RNA primer at replication fork early on. So remember, the replication fork is the point at which origin of replication is also. It's the point at which we have the first splitting. And in order to have that first splitting, the first thing that's going to come in is an RNA, polymer, RNA primase molecule, which we'll denote by, let's say, a circle figure right here. It's going to come in and it's going to add on these orange portions so that this DNA polymerase molecule gets the help it needs to do the process that it does so well. So it needs a little bit of help from RNA primase. RNA primase comes in and does this job. Once it does this job, this is going to be important under to understand that as it's doing this, it's these pieces of RNA primer are going to be complementary to parent DNA, of course, because they work in much the same way as DNA polymerase works, it's just that they're RNA. We don't need to understand the, the sort of the reasonings behind that. You'll learn about that as you take more advanced classes. The thing about GenBio is we just need to know how things happen, why things happen, not the nitty-gritty details. So it's complementary to the parent DNA strand, and also this works. Let's say DNA RNA primase works. Um, in the job that it does, and DNA polymerase doesn't work in the job that it does in this sort of nuanced situation right here because RNA primase doesn't need what is called a, doesn't need, let me rewrite that, doesn't need what is known as a free three prime, oops, doesn't need a free three prime OH. Doesn't need a free three prime OH like polymerase. Just know that fact. I don't want to get into the details of that. It's going to get a little confusing. DNA polymerase needs a three prime end, much like this, and a much like this, to start its job. RNA, RNA primase does not need such an end. Okay. And finally, we're going to end our elongation discussion by looking at what's going on at the replication fork. So a couple of very important things at the replication fork. Two big ideas at the replication fork are the following. There is going to be two different strands, because remember, we're going to be uh, replicating uh, two parent, mo uh, parent molecule that's going to split up in half and have two templates. We're going to have two templates. Okay, There are two templates, thus there are two growing strands. Two growing strands. Now, in my drawings, I haven't shown you two. Why? I can't draw that well. I highly suggest going on YouTube, looking at your textbook, and seeing both strands growing simultaneously. Remember, that's a rule that we developed in our previous initiation lecture, in our previous initiation video. So at the replication fork, we have two strands, two growing strands. We can call them the following. There's going to be a leading strand, and there's also going to be what is known as a lagging strand. And the reason why they are leading and lagging is the following. The leading strand is always growing toward the replication fork. Always, keyword, growing 
toward rep fork. I don't want to say any more than that because I really can't do this justice unless I have a figure or a video to work off of. I highly suggest watching this happen. It's really going to click a lot more when you go on my YouTube playlist and see the actual DNA leading strand doing what it does. In addition, the leading strand is rather smooth and continuous in the way that it adds on the bases. The bases get add on very quickly, very smoothly, thus it's the leading strand. So, lagging strand is probably a lot different, right? And it is. The lagging strand is actually going to be synthesized in short, discontinuous, discontinuous segments. That's why it's called lagging strand. Short, discontinuous segments, and also in this situation, the direction of synthesis, of DNA synthesis in this situation, is actually away from fork. So it's the exact opposite, I think. Away from fork. One is always going towards fork, it's smooth and continuous. The other one is discontinuous, it's short segments that get latched on uh, little by little away from the fork. So we have this overall idea of a leading and lagging strand. I don't want to enunciate any more really details. I don't want to go over more details than this because that's really all you're responsible for. As far as knowing why it lags and why it leads, um, it's all due to the, act, the way the DNA polymerase works. And you'll see on the lagging strand, if you watch a video, why DNA polymerase lags in this situation and leads in this situation. It's all about this 5' prime to 3' prime rule. It's a very important rule that you should understand. And finally, we're going to uh, conclude with these two final facts. The overall, the overall direction of replication is toward the fork, which can be seen in a video. And also, finally, last thing, once complete, once this whole thing is complete, all fragments, all fragments are sort of glued together, I think is a good way to think of it. Glued together via one more enzyme you should know. It's called via DNA ligase. So, one thing I forgot to mention, um, what I mean by these fragments is that there are going to be points at which you have this sort of uh, orange and then blue, right? This is not that nice, not that continuous. In order for this to look nice and neat, you're going to have DNA ligase come in and make sure uh, a different molecule is going to come in, replace it with a blue molecule, and then it's going to be sort of glued on nice and strong by DNA ligase all throughout. In addition, notice how this is in short and discontinuous segments. In order for these short and discontinuous segments, which are called, um, you should put down right underneath this, they're actually called Okazaki fragments. In order for these Okazaki fragments to um, be glued together, you use DNA ligase to make a nice, smooth, new DNA strand with a semi-conservative nature. So overall, we've gone through elongation. Lots of enzymes, lots of processes, lots of sort of uh, always rules that have to be understood. In order for you to fully appreciate the complexity associated with DNA replication, one more time, please, please watch a video on DNA replication that shows you the actual process in a 3D animation. It's absolutely wonderful. I really, really suggest it. The playlists that I have have many of those videos that I really, really enjoy. And now we've completed our semi-conservative replication and we'll have one more flowchart devoted to mutations.